kami nak CRI uh, 2018. Sebelum kita mulakan, minta mari duduk alah ke depan sikit lagi. Mari duduk alah ke depan sikit. The one at the back. Why don't you come closer? Prof Muqtada. Dr. Muqtada come forward. You know? Mari duduk depan. Mari, mari ke depan. Mari ke depan. Alright. So that you can uh, hear better. You can see better. Come, come. Come closer. Alright, uh, kita mulakan bismillahirrahmanirrahim sekali lagi. Uh, terima kasih uh, Prof Maizan, pengerusi uh, seminar CRI uh, 2018 uh, uh, dan juga terima kasih kepada Prof Jasni, uh, pengarah RMO, uh, uh, Prof Bala ada bersama kita sebagai moderator dalam pembentangan uh, keynote. Ini ialah salah satu daripada event uh, dalam KRI, nah, dalam KRI 18 ini iaitu seminar. Dan seminar ini akan mengenengahkan uh, uh, pembentangan daripada kertas kerja kertas kerja daripada para penyelidik. You know, uh, kita uh, telah kumpulkan berjaya kumpulkan 150 papers, nah, posters dan juga paper present oral presentation untuk seminar ini. But tapi you look at the you you look at the audience di manakah semua researcher itu, di mana mereka berada. Now you know I was talking about uh, budaya ilmu, budaya ilmu pengetahuan. Ini semua ni budaya-budaya yang sangat lemah di UMK. In any function we had kalau majlis tu majlis ilmu, kita susah nak dapat crowd. Tapi kalau majlis tu uh, student punya yang berjoget yang semua-semua tu kita boleh dapat crowd. Tak ada masalah. Contoh dalam PESCO. I'm not trying to say that PESCO is no good, tetapi that is the trend, you know yang kita lihat lebih banyak orang suka hiburan sebab itulah sedikit sebanyak bila kelab kebudayaan minta nak menari tadi saya kata iyalah I, do, I cannot make it so genuinely very academic anymore nanti orang naik jemu but alhamdulillah bila dengar lagu tadi ramai orang dah mula ah dia dah mula goyang walaupun it is a forum where we talk about research we talk about knowledge we talk about academic matters tetapi walau bagaimanapun budaya itulah yang kita nak cuba usahakan untuk tukar so that you know at universities people love knowledge more than anything else people utamakan ilmu more than anything else you know and the interest academic selain daripada dissemination you share knowledge you know and and uh, how to share is always new knowledge which is coming from research itu yang kita nak advocate And the success of research university is mainly because majority of the population loves research and knowledge. Jadi itulah budaya dan saya harap perkara ini menjadi perkara yang penting future so that uh, uh, kita lebih ramai lahirkan ilmuan nah, yang ada ilmu dan akan digunakan untuk pembangunan diri dan juga pembangunan negara. So that's why kita buat seminar ini. Dan saya dah katakan juga seperti juga pameran yang ada di sana hanya mereka-mereka yang menang who, who those who, who get some recognition like you get gold for example kita akan benarkan untuk ambil bahagian untuk ke peringkat pameran di luar UMK macam ITEC, MTE, Bio Malaysia or even uh, ke luar negara. So we will start here. Sama juga saya katakan Oh, I'll say the same thing for seminar ini. I want all of you yang ada active grants to present dulu. It is uh, then you can tell exactly whether they are actually doing the job or not. Because this ini, when you present a paper, you know exactly whether that work is genuine yours or otherwise. If you go to a conference elsewhere, the audience is majority are not not among us. So you can present any Tom, Dick, and Harry's punya work and say it's yours. Nobody knows, but here will be genuine. I know if it's presented by Professor X, ah, uh, he does the job. It's not someone else. He is the expert. You know very well. So again, I I I, I said to uh, because now, uh, 
menghadiri persidangan is under my office I'm saying to them I'll say that for those who wanted to go and present papers they have to got to go through some form of presentation whether at the faculty or a forum like this if not if they have not this is something new I said no we have not seen something therefore you can put up a good paper when you send for presentation because at certain level it has been commented so so those are the things you know and that is also a way for me to and ensure that I start inculcating the culture of knowledge building research you know culture within our academics and students you know, so that is that is that is something that I would like to see at least uh, you know not long enough you know I've got another two months to go but nevertheless I kept on saying the same thing so that it becomes something that you keep on to yourself and bring it forward when you enter 2019 I still have a, a two weeks before I leave the university in in 2019 but I'll make sure that all what I've said I'm going to put on papers and 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 try to make sure that uh, the the university at least the vice chancellor will uh, will try to see that the importance of what we are doing again I'm not trying to say that we have to do work terribly hard that we can compete the RUs no I'm not trying to compete with UKM I'm not competing with USM or MU but try to think when you do things try to make sure that they are different whether we can the different part of our 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 work probably will be whether it is uh, acceptable in the market at least to support entrepreneurship this morning Prof Raha was saying that now the characterization of universities are based on five areas one is called RU the other one is called MTUN the other one is called uh, Islamic the other one is called comprehensive and the other one is focus five of us is in the focus and we are happens to be in the focus our focus is ke usawana so whatever we do we eat we sleep we whatever you do you cry you eat it your research you study you do whatever you teach is about entrepreneurship regardless of any discipline so if you are whether you are in science think think how that can be translated in something entrepreneurial if you are in FTKW you design you must not just design just because for the sake of designing you must have it someone to think whether they are entrepreneurial uh, you know uh, impact and things like that so these are the things that is becoming and our measurement is going to be different when we say focus the next question is what is your contribution in entrepreneurship and you know when they declare this we are we have got to change even our LMPT we have got to change our LMPT to suit that how much will you be contributing to enhance entrepreneurship by having said that we are not neglecting fundamental because knowledge building is still necessary but that knowledge building is to support the applied which is moving towards entrepreneurship so again this is something very important and this afternoon we are honored to have two uh, uh, speakers two professors uh, professor Ziad and also professor Susanna uh, one is from the science the other one is from the social social science who will share with us uh, what research is all about and at least to the reference is your area of uh, expertise uh, I would like to thank both of them and also this opportunity we also I also like to thank all the speakers for the seminar we've got as I said 150 of them uh, I don't see 100 not even 50 also not even in the room I don't know where they are uh, this is a trend uh, they come only during the session after that they will go around even if they go for conferences outside they will go during the their, uh, my slot is three o'clock in the afternoon so they will be there at three o'clock but the rest of the day and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow they are all missing where they go uh, uh, sightseeing and they said that I was so mad to one of us you know I said I will not approve if you are not honest with if you want to go to conference make sure you go to conference if you don't if you lie to me 
I will never forgive you. And he will say, Allah Datuk, dia kata, this is the opportunity for me. This is how lecturer travel and see the world. Otherwise, they will not be able to see. So your intention is to see the world through conference. Good. If you want to do so, finish the three-day conference. Take leave another three days and join whatever you want to do and do whatever you want to do thereafter. But not during the conference. And now, this is a three-day conference for all of us, 150 of them. They should be here. They should be here, and then after that, we'll do whatever you want to do thereafter. Because we have registered for that. You know, and we have placed food, etc., etc., for the three-day conference. You know? We are talking about Nilai Murni. We're talking about values. These are simple values. And to me, you are not honest with what you're doing. I will have to say that because this is a culture in this university. Okay? So, you're, gonna le you're going to listen last, you know. I'm not going to be doing this again in the future. I won't be around anyway. So, bear with me uh, two more months. I'm going to be very uh, aggressive in telling what's right and what's wrong. I'm going to give another talk. Uh, on the 15th of January, the last day sebagai Timbalan Nap Chancellor PNI, I'm going to reiterate this. I'm going to tell exactly what was, what will be my, what will, what are all my observation for the last 11 years as a 12 years as a pioneer, as the person who looks from day one of this university until I'm going to leave on the 15th January, the last day of my TNCPI. I still have three weeks bef uh, before I re fully retire, but I'm going to take leave for the next three weeks. And I certainly hope, uh, I certainly hope that I will see a better UMK uh, in the near future. You know, uh, it is a different feeling altogether for me because uh, I started with UMK, you know, uh, from, the, from the scratch, from the floor, and I see people grow, some of them grow in a different way but but you see that we still need to do a lot of other things that will help all our students to turn into something uh, for the future all right again uh, saya ingin mengucapkan berbanyak terima kasih i would like to thank everybody for being able to be with us now uh, share sharing knowledge and so on is also part and parcel of our uh, our job nah? not just you know uh, pagi ni prof raha dah sebut mengajar penyelidikan, khidmat masyarakat, you know, but to share that, you know, and make sure that knowledge is impart ialah juga ibadah. And this is the biggest ibadah, I presume. Sebab ilmu yang akan dimanafati itu akan tetap kekal walaupun kita dah tidak ada di dunia ini lagi. You know, so uh, I hope uh, semua akan ambil bahagian dengan bersungguh-sungguh we are going to have uh, a proceeding uh, and we are, we are also going to publish uh, selected papers in the journal yang telah kita kenal pasti. All right. And kalau journal itu kena bayar, uh, bukan hanya journal dalam UMK, kita ada Terniat, kita ada uh, yang di Jeli, kita ada apa nama journal di Jeli? Uh, JTRS, kita akan masuk situ. But if you don't think you want Terniat and there's another one dekat FKP uh, called... Uh, Apa dia? JAB. Kalau kalau kita tak mahu masukkan paper kita dalam tiga-tiga jurnal lokal tep, uh, di, di universiti ini, kita nak benarkan, kita carilah jurnal-jurnal uh, lain yang you think uh, uh, lebih baik dan I'm willing to pay for the fee yang kena bayar kalau jurnal itu minta uh, minta ke, apa? yuran, yuran publication itu. I've allocated money for that and we still have that money. We will use that money untuk bayar kalau kena bayar. Untuk JEB, untuk T, JTR, eh, tak kena bayar kan? Tak kena bayar. Yang tu free of charge. So, you know, remember, kita buat research ni bukan untuk university. Ingat itu. Kita buat research ni kerana untuk pembangunan kerjaya kita. You got no research, you got no paper, you got no publication. Nanti bila you want to apply for naik pangkat, you do not have those, you be saying. You be saying, susah nak naik pangkat di UMK itu ini. But those yang minta naik pangkat, tak ada quality, no papers. No good papers. 
and you start missing. You know, this is no good. And I'm going to tell you that if you come with substance, no good reason untuk tolak. You come with substance, no good reason to tolak. Ya, majority yang datang ni tak cukup. Kain senting dan nak angkat, kalau angkat tinggi nak tutup pusat, kaki nampak. Turunkan, londehkan, tutup kaki, pusat nampak. Jadi kita kata jangan pakai apa-apa. Tak payah. So tak ada, kita tak bagi apa-apa. But if you come, satu kain yang boleh tutup pusat sampai ke bawah, terus ke dada, tak ada masalah. Kita akan terus jemput saja. So that is the predicament we have. So you have to understand it is for your own good. Uh, academic. You know? And of course we have students here. It is also uh, good for us to understand kerjaya ataupun peranan seorang yang berada di universiti. Like your own. Alright, in the future mana tahu insyaAllah kita jadi pensyarah kita juga akan faham peranan ini. So sekali lagi terima kasih Prof Maizan dan pasukannya she worked very hard you know to get all this together dengan bising dia dengan apa tapi she did it dengan hati yang ikhlas. Saya rasa bersyukur dah dua tahun berturut-turut dia buat dan dia sentiasa menghadapi masalah tapi hatinya cekal terus ingin juga melihat researcher-researcher kita ini membentangkan kertas kerja kongsi ilmu pengetahuan dan I hope uh, hanya Allah saja yang dapat membalas. So, terima kasih uh, Prof Maizan dan pasukannya uh, dan saya harap kita akan dapat manfaat daripada seminar yang kita adakan selama tiga hari nah? hari ini, esok dan half day off on the fifth at different places try to find where they are and encourage student yang dekat sini encourage your friends to come and listen to all this seminar pilihlah yang berkait dengan kita sebab kita ada semua bidang ada science social ada science betul dan you can choose alright to 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 get information and to get knowledge out of this with that uh, saya terima kasih kepada semua yang dapat menghadirkan diri pada petang ini dan dengan lafaz bismillahirrahmanirrahim saya dengan ini merasmikan seminar seminar CRI uh, 2018 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim taufik wal hidayah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Terima kasih Datuk di atas uh, kata-kata aluan yang very impressive and then uh, uh, and also uh, rasmikan di seminar eh, uh, UMK seminar UMK CRI seminar 2018 so tanpa membuang masa saya menjemput uh, Prof Bala Krisnan untuk uh, sebagai moderator untuk keynote, uh, uh, pembentangan keynote Okay, um, salam sejahtera and good, very good afternoon. Uh, yang bahagia, uh, Professor Datuk Dr. Ibrahim Omar, our Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation, uh, Prof. Jasni, uh, Director of RMO, Prof. Esu Professor Maizan, who is a chairperson uh, for CRI, and also our two speakers. Huh? Can I welcome two of you? Sit next to me. Right, and also uh, Datuk Bhatt and all the professors, researchers, uh, students eh, who are here. Uh, I think we are lucky and uh, fortunate to have uh, two uh, distinct speakers eh, who are both of them my good friends. Um, I know them for, for many years. Lah. But uh, today is actually a very important day for people from uh, science and social sciences uh, because uh, you may understand what is the research about, uh, where UMK is supposed to go. And these two people will talk about not only research, they are talking about what is the role of UMK. UMK is supposed to be an entrepreneurial university and uh, our research to be translated. Huh? That's why our team translated into a commercial and data we sell the product. And two of them actually uh, involved. Huh? So I would like to uh, introduce the first speaker, Prof. Uh, Prof have a very long uh, list of the 
by your daughter, and I received 53 pages yesterday. Then I was thinking, I don't know where to start, but unfortunately, it was so good. He was so busy yesterday, he sent me a one page, so easy for me to uh, highlight. Okay, as we know, uh, Prof. Ayar, right? Technology Dr. Ahmad Ziad Sulaiman, everybody know, he's a well-known professor in biochemical engineering, eh? in the Faculty of Bioengineering and Technology, University of Malaysia, Kelantan, uh, based in Jali campus. And Prof, uh, he got the Bachelor of Engineering, eh? Honours and Master of Engineering, Chemical Engineering, degree from University of Technology, Malaysia, and also PhD in Biochemical eh? Engineering from Massey University, uh, New Zealand. Uh, Prof is also a registered professional engineer under Board of Engineers, uh, Malaysia. Um, just to highlight his uh, academic uh, credential, eh? Prof actually completed, uh, supervised one postdoctoral and seven PhD students. Wow. So, so look very young. Eh? I was jealous. You look at his face, so young, okay? And eight master students and 15 graduate interns as main supervisor. And as you know, Prof, uh, if you follow his Facebook, eh? some of you go follow his Facebook, he's very busy. He was always invited as a keynote speaker uh, locally and internationally. And uh, we know that Prof actually uh, chemical and biochemical engineering specializing in bio separation engineering for over 18 years. And he has published a lot of papers in international reputable journal, uh, especially ISI. Eh? And I want to highlight something special on him. Eh? that we are very lucky to have him today. He had received nearly 4 million, you know, 4 million research grant eh, from various agencies in Malaysia. 3 million was received from the Ministry of Science and Technology, mostly, to develop a product, eh, Chinaman Ultrasonic Extraction Plant in Keningau, eh, Sabah. Eh, Prof. Meanwhile, 700,000 from Ministry of Agriculture and Agro Base and NKA research grant. So as we can see, he received uh, more than at least uh, 5 million, eh, and uh, he was also his research recognized eh, by worldwide. And his product almost already commercialized. I think I use your product, you know, Prof. He gave me the product last year, two of this uh, bottle free eh, to testing. I'm going to promote your product, you know. I'm looking for the partner. It's very good, eh? Some of you can try. Those are very, as very student, you're working so hard. You try, Prof. Yeah, the product. Okay, Prof. Um, I would like to invite you to talk about. This topic will be uh, stingless honey. In Malay, we call madu kelulut. Eh? Base product upstream to valuable downstream product for local to global commercialization. So, Prof, I think maybe around 3.30, okay? Ah, uh, 4.30, you can stop. Then maybe open a question. Okay, floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And very good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, my, my best friend, Professor uh, Moderator, Prof. Bala. And then uh, my honor today is uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Datuk. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give uh, some of the information about the knowledge uh, of the uh, Kelulut uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, all professors, uh, Senate members, and top management of the uh, UMK uh, institution, uh, UMK UC Malaysia Kelantan. Okay, today uh, I would like to share with you guys. Maybe I can. Maybe today I talk. Uh, some sometime I try to mix Malay and uh, and what in English because uh, I think today we we what we receive uh, not only student from uh, from what from uh, UMK and staff from UMK. But today we receive. Uh, I have one agent from uh, from Rantau Panjang today. Uh, we will uh, we will we will distribute as as my sole distributor for the South Thailand uh, for not only my product maybe uh, maybe our what our commercialized product from UMK. Yeah, Mr. Apuni, say panggil Mr. Azrin. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Okay, um, my keynote uh, title. Uh, uh, this afternoon uh, is actually sorry a stingless a stingless honey based product okay upstream to valuable downstream product from local to global commercialization i think uh, most of uh, people uh, around in the world 
they know about the honey, right? Sometimes they know about uh, madu tualang. Some 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 people they know about the kelulut. Okay, but basically they have a lot of opportunities for us, you know, to to study. Okay, to study to search about the about the honey itself. Not only the honey, the anatomy of the bees itself. All right, and then that one is more on the upstream level. But of course they have a lot of research as well, and then you can make a lot of money when you go to the downstream level. Okay, that's why my research not just only tackle uh, on the upstream level, but at the same time, I'm trying to tackle at the downstream level as well. Okay, I think because uh, before I start uh, 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 very depth about, about this, about this talk, uh, maybe we need to share, and I will try to recite uh, uh, two words, uh, two, two recitation words from the Al-Quran, from the An-Nahlu uh, Surah. Okay, uh, this is uh, where uh, the the what the bees the honey honey itself um, story by the by the what by Allah subhanahu wa taala in the in the Quran. Okay, Auz billahi min al-shaytan rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Wa awha rabbuka ila nahli an ittakhidhi min al-jibal buyuta wa min al-shajar wa min ma yagrishun. ثم كل ثم كل من كل الثمرات فاسلك سبل ربك ذللا يخرج من بطونها شراب مختلف ألوانه فيه شفاء للناس إن إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يتفكرون. النحل 68 and 69. Okay, yang bermaksud dan Tuhanmu mengilhamkan kepada lebah buatlah sarang-sarang di bukit-bukit, di pohon-pohon kayu dan di tempat-tempat yang di mana manusia berada. Kemudian makanlah dari tiap-tiap yang ini macam buah-buahan dan tempuhlah jalan Rabbmu yang telah dimudahkan bagimu. Dari perut lebah itu keluar minuman yakni madu, hani yang bermacam-macam warnanya. Di dalamnya terdapat ubat yang menyembuhkan bagi manusia. Sesungguhnya pada yang demikian itu benar-benar terdapat tanda yakni kebesaran Tuhan bagi orang-orang yang memikirkan. Which is this is like I think this is like you know the evidence why we need to know about the about the hani, about the about the bees and then I think when we do when we when we when we conduct this research is at the same time we try to support um, the what the, the meaning from this from this surah all right i think maybe at the same time kita dapat pahala and then ada dalam sense sama kita mendapat rahmat daripada Allah Subhanahu wa taala insyaallah okay next point dekat mana Di sini. Okay, tak apalah. When I when I instruct you to next, and then you you click the, the page. Okay. Uh, before we proceed with the um, with the what with the overall uh, about the about the what about the um, uh, honey as overall, I think we need to know the characteristic anatomy of the of the bees. Okay. If you can see from the from the characteristic from the characteristic of the bees, uh, sting, stingless bee. Okay, if you can see from the size, size itself is about three to eight millimeter. Okay, uh, you play with the with the what with with a, with a really small what we call it. This is like a baby knit. I call I call every time when I'm doing this research. I call baby knit. Eh? Knit. Knit is kecil. All right. And then I think for the legs, um, uh, this uh, uh, single bee has got three pair leg, uh, legs. Yeah. And then hit which one pair which eyes and one pair antenna. Alright, and then uh, one pair of wing. Uh, that is uh, the abdomen. I think this is quite interesting. Okay, when you have your own farm, okay, when you dealing directly with these kinds of uh, of what of uh, stingless bee, and then you can feel, you know, the, the instinct between your instincts and the and the stingless and, and the stingless stingless instinct. Sometimes when you need to open the hive, okay, when you need to 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 uh, to, to harvest the the what the, the honey. Sometimes people, when they when they not really, you know, really um, uh, like Muslim, when you need to recite the Bismillah, you you salawat and everything, you know. Of uh, at the same time, you know the the stingless bee uh, actually they can they can attack you immediately, okay? Because of they really like your hair, 
Okay, that's why uh, those like people like they are really scary about these kinds of of what of uh, bees. They always use the protector. Okay, you use the the special clothes and so on. But for me, Alhamdulillah, until now when when I try to to try try to recite the the, the what the Fatiha and I try to talk to him. Okay, try to talk to them. Sorry, try to talk to them. That okay, I'm coming here. I need to get your 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 products because of I need to use for study for the student and so on. But Alhamdulillah, all the bees is actually they 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 what they go around and around and then they just open to you straight away. Okay, and then you give they 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 really give you the the, the time to take so much honey that you you can, and then it is, after that when you close and then you of course like when you when you leave. Uh, uh, somebody house you need to say thank you and then everything I think this is like really wonderful experience because of this is how we deal not only we're dealing with the human at the same time when we're dealing with the animal something animal really appreciate you because of if you can based on what 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 the, the Anahlu said just now is basically the honey is the shift up to earth meaning that of course they try to they what they really work hard for you bring like a really good you know benefits of the honey is because of they need to make sure that all the human is actually is is healthy and so on right uh, that is about the really interesting about about the what about the about the stingless bee okay next okay uh, when we talk about the stingless bee okay sometime when uh, i think I, I still remember when i was uh, when i was uh, small when i was kid you know okay because of i live in really rural area but something like your your because uh, in in our in our old house we have like you know um, something we 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 saw like a really small clulut you know the small stingless bee right? staying in the in the what in the in the house uh, that one is one types of, uh, of 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 species but based on the on the literature we can see that the species we found now is actually is 150 species stingless stingless honey yes yeah? stingless honey but this is this is recorded. And then, uh, and then, uh, searched by uh, some of the researchers worldwide, but maybe they have more. All right, okay. Because of when they explore about the about the sting honey, something not maybe not only 150, maybe maybe they have more. Okay, okay. Uh, I think most of the really um, uh, the what, the most important. I think the most uh, popular uh, uh, stingless honey is Trigona scepto trigona. Okay, I think when you when you talk about trigona itama whatever, that is one of the of the what of the uh, of the sp of the of the species, and then trigona leviceps, okay, and then trigona epicalis, trigona thoracica, trigona itama. Okay, it's quite interesting. What when you when you sometimes when you when you take one beast for example, and then you put under microscope, you can see the head. The, the what the, um, the beast itself have the horn, you know. And then they bring some sort of like a tail at the back, okay? Uh, that is quite interesting. Okay, from now, not only FBKT faculty can study about this, about this bee, I think faculty of Warisan, faculty of Usahuku Sawanan, you can study about this bee as well, okay? Many, many, they have a lot of opportunity for you to study. I think just now, one of the students from the FTKW, okay, then, and then he asked me the question, Sir, how I need to relate my research with this honey? This is like really quite, quite, you know, really quite interesting question from our undergraduate student. They need to know more about the about the stingless, not just only focus in one 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 type of research, but at the same time you can study about about other other what other types of of field and so on. I think after this, after my presentation finish, I need student from Bacho, student from Pekalan Shepherd. You go to Jelly and then we study together. Is all right? Okay, that's good. Next. Ah, okay, boleh. Okay, I think this is quite common. I think you know about this because of uh, stingless bee are very special insects. Okay, as it can produce three different product. Okay, of course. Oh, sorry. Of course, uh, they got the honey pot. Honey pot is a pole where the bees bring all the product. Okay, surround. Okay, and then they bring back, uh, bring back to the to the to the to the what to the hive. You know hive, right? Colony. We call colony. Okay, and then they fill all the nectar, the water, and everything inside the poles. Okay, and then they have the bee bread. Okay, sometimes if you are if you are not lucky, okay, if you're unlucky, when you open the, the what the plastic, okay, the, the cover for the for the hive, sometimes you can see they have no they have no honey. They have a lot of you know the bee bread. They give you the output is in the bee bread. But sometimes it bee bread is very nice. 
okay but normally when you when you when you making the you know the the half boil uh, egg okay half boil egg and then you put uh, the bee bread and then you eat together that's a really nice you can you can feel like you know macam masam masam manis sedikit all right it's really nice okay okay and then of course they got honey okay and then they got properly i think for the sunnatullah of the bees the sunnatullah means it basically is a creation by 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 the god okay um, before the bees travel to get the nectar the pollen okay they will try to search they try to find the water first okay the water okay and then after they they what they they they, they take the water and then they will fly and then get the the flowers nectar and so on okay and then they will bring back to the that's why uh, the water content inside the honey is quite high it's about 25% okay when you need to when you need to uh, make it uh, as a product you still need to comply the requirement from the KKM the MPRA to just to make sure that you need to remove the water less down up to 5% only uh, this is this is another you know another another uh, challenging for us you know to to remove the, the water it's not easy because now many of the beekeepers now they are using you know the 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 what the the the, the double boiling uh, process they just boil the, the honey okay up to 60 to 70 degrees celsius just to remove the, to evaporate all the water but this technique is actually is not it's not really it's not really what it's not really uh, 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 good is because of when you when you go up to 50 degrees celsius all the enzyme microbe will be denatured meaning that you just drink only syrup but that's, they have no any other what other uh, effect to to your body because enzyme I think and then uh, the what we call that the microbes all gone. That's the enzyme and microbe goods to to, to our body. That's why uh, I will uh, share with you, uh, share with you as well uh, how we do the the what the, the another time another uh, innovation, which is we try to use the spinning and vacuum process just to make sure that we can remove the water without without heating up the the, the honey. Later on we will share. Okay, and then we have the propolis. Okay, this is not like uh, Polis Evo 2. Okay, this is propolis. Sometimes when we when we when we when we highlight propo, uh, 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 propolis, of course this is propolis. What is a polis? Okay, propolis is 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 actually is a is a what uh, we call the tar, the, the 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 what just to hold the, the the pot just to make sure that the pot can be can can be what can be um, uh, can be stable. And then when uh, when the when the pole is actually is is full by by the honey, and then uh, naturally um, bees will use the you know the amylis, I think the ailio just to, to close you know the the, the, the pole. Meaning that uh, that is done for the for the what for the uh, for, for, for for one pot uh, for one pole, and then and then uh, the bees just waiting the human just harvest uh, harvesting using the palm and so on. And then when when we when we ha harvested the, the honey, we just do the 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 what the uh, um, we call it just chongkil macam tu and then and then we just we just uh, put two pumps straight away like this okay now we have a lot a uh, lot apa tu a lot uh, new technology about the pump because previously when you use the pump you need to bring the wheelbarrow you know because of you need to bring you know like a really big uh, battery because of you need to plug to the to the what to the to the pump because right now I think this is uh, invented by the, the by the doctor Zol eh? doctor Zol from USM then datuk eh from the Dr. Zol, he actually he invented one uh, one system, the, the the pump system, okay, which is uh, they, they they what they just use like a really simple battery, but you can after finish uh, after the battery wait, and then you can use your your what your power uh, power bank, uh, not so power bank, the what the um, uh, yeah apa tu? battery right, uh, the the like like the handphone battery one, and then you just plug the USB and then you can charge the the, the what the the uh, the pump. I think that is like another new innovation uh, for the for the for the for the for the honey pump. Eh? Okay, next. Okay, if you can see from this uh, from this graph, okay, if you can see the the honey production, okay, uh, for the market is basically is is what is al always constantly high. Okay, tak pernah tak pernah ada lagi dia punya apa tu dia punya pattern tu menurun. Okay. Yang menurunnya hanyalah bila musim hujan macam ni bulan 10 bulan 11 bulan 12 okay honey production will be a bit a bit drop okay because of you know hujan and then dia pun malas dan macam kita lah bila hujan sejuk-sejuk duduk dalam aircon duduk dalam bilik lagi best then no production alright and then uh, not much honey can be can be what can be can be can, can be collected okay if you can see uh, the data oh, sorry the data uh, from 2016 to uh, 2020 the honey price increment always increase 
yeah? uh, this is this is we 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 we, we notice that the honey the, the the what the requirement of honey not only for malaysia worldwide is always demand yeah? all right okay this is the benefit uh, benefit of stingless bee honey okay i think this is really good uh, for for what for 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 student for example if you need to do uh, research if you need to do like assignment uh, related to the what to the honey and and and, and what and, and other, other 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 species of bees which is this is like a really good effective pollinator Okay, effective pollinator means, for example, if you put the half under the durian tree, for example, okay, and then your durian will be the best durian because of the, the natural poly, uh, pollination will be will be what will be um, uh, make it well, all right. And then sometimes you can you can feel the honey itself feel like a durian. Ah, this is interesting. But when you when you when you uh, uh, allocate your your half just under the pandan uh, coconut tree. Then you can feel like really nice pandan honey, uh, pandan honey uh, kelulut. Uh, very nice. Okay, I feel this all, all this kind because of we, we do the research. Because uh, previously when I was at UMP last time, okay, I tried to uh, make it, uh, I asked my FYP student to do some research. Okay, uh, stand hive, the, 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 what, the same species, we just put just beside the moss. Okay, and then another 10, 10, 10, what, 10 colony, we put just like far away in, in, the, in, the, what, in the forest, in the jungle. And then we need to see the pro productivity. Really miracle because of this, uh, when, when, we, when we place it, the, the, what, the hay just beside the moss, when they, res when they always uh, hear about the recitation, about the recitation of Quran, about the azan, everything, the production is actually is really miracle. We can, we can get the different about uh, 67%, okay? More uh, production of honey compared that just honey just stay, stay what? Stay um, alone in the, in, the, in, the, in the forest. Meaning that mungkin dia dekat dalam hutan tu dia takut kot sebab dekat dekat masjid ni dia selalu dengar. I think this is another kinds of research that we can do, all right? And then we can, we can get some benefit from that. We can show, meaning that when we when we place it the the what the the honey just beside the moss maybe we can get more production uh, about the honey yeah okay i think next it rich in antioxidant of course yeah and then can be used as restorative after an illness to to soothe pain antimicrobial properties enhance immune system act as antiseptic okay now uh, i have one study now we we try to make it the honey as one of the food preservative because now for the food Always we use the chemical preservative. Now honey can be a good uh, preservative. If you if you not trust me, try to cook your your what your your food, okay, together with the honey. No, not the fake honey, okay, not the syrup honey outside, but take it from the from the what from the hive or, or from the colony, and then cook together with the food. If you can you can what based on on, on our 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 simple simple study. Okay, the food that we, 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 we cook together with the what with the, with the honey, they can about to prolong, you know, the, 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 the food the food life, the food chef life up to maybe about about five to six days, okay, without uh, 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 putting uh, putting it inside the fridge. Uh, this is how we, we, we try to make it. Maybe uh, some of the student here, okay, maybe you are from from Bacho or maybe you are from Pengalan Shepa or maybe from Jeli, you can take this as one of your research study yeah? uh, food preservative uh, additive yeah okay next is uh, this is the therapeutic uh, healing potency of honey if you can see antimicrobial anti activities uh, uh, just now ice disorder reproductive uh, system yes you see uh, worn eyes cardiovascular disease anti hyperlimidicate anti cancer antioxidant and etc if you can see if, uh, if you can read from here okay that's why uh, some of uh, the the what the honey Okay, it's like a really good for the for the heart problem. Okay, sometimes uh, I, I I exposed this experience before. Okay, where uh, one of the I think one of the patient. Okay, they 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 what they 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 they, they share with me. Okay, she he share with me, which is um, he, he what he tried to get like a really bitter bitter honey. The bitter honey you can get uh, from directly from the from the jungle. The bitter one, you know, basically they have no sweet, they have no sour, but it's really bitter. Bitter means pahit, eh? really bitter. But he, he actually, he used this, this kinds of honey, and then alhamdulillah, two block is gone. Okay, this is, this is another, another types of what, of, of honey. But I think this is from the Tarosika species. Okay, all right. 
Okay, this is the content nutrient. Of course, you see, this is natural honey. Okay, this is not like a fake honey. Fake honey means that you can. Okay, do you know how to how to make uh, how to make the the fake honey? Tahu tak macam mana nak buat? Ah, you you must you masak sugar, make it the sugar tu sampai caramel, sampai dia jadi hitam, pahit-pahit sikit, and then you put the apa tu uh, uh, apa tu uh, apple vinegar, uh, cuka apple. You dah you dah you dah boleh declare that is the apa tu madu kelulut. Eh? Senang je nak 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 jual. Tapi we don't want like this. Sometimes macam musim hujan ni, sometimes they they they, they what they, they they do some sort like macam uh, simulated punya sugar which is dia potong apa ni potong pisang dia letak tepi tu dia cat dengan air gula dekat dinding then they ask the bees go to the go to the go to the wall and then do the the do the apa tu uh, uh, like uh, pollination apa tu just directly to the door bring back to the to the hive uh, this is another another kinds of uh, really not good apa ni um, uh, exercise we teach the the bees uh, so lazy bees pergi ke uh, apa ni cari apa tu cari uh, uh, nektar apa tu or, or, uh, apa tu uh, uh, pollination dekat dekat tanah pokok uh, this is another kinds of of really fake uh, adulteran lah okay if you can see from from here you can see the vitamin okay all this vitamin mineral others is actually is really good to our body okay uh, jadi hari-hari tiap-tiap pagi make sure ambil honey uh, kan jadi barulah jadi macam our our what our TNC every day every day apa ni cergas apa tu uh, apa di bertenaga dan sebagainya because of kita consume the honey ya yeah? alright uh, this is a benefit of propolis just now okay now they have another study juga kita try to make it the propolis as the cherry chewing gum punya apa ni uh, base okay which is the chewing gum sekarang kalau kita makan kalau kita chew kan kalau kita chew the the what the the chewing gum lepas tu kita kena buang betul because of they got like a synthetic rubber inside but maybe when we use the propolis okay especially for the kids Okay, when we when we chew the the, the chewing gum, later on we can go straight and and and, and swallow, uh, and kita boleh telan. And then dia akan bagi very very nice apa tu uh, a benefit to the to the body. Uh, this is another kinds of study. Ada food dekat sini. Carry on. You can study. Eh? Propolis is a form from the resin material extracted from the tree containing rubber. Bees then process it to be the from propolis. Okay, I think this is another kinds of 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 what of research you can do. Okay, this is the medical specification of propolis having antibiotic properties, strengthen blood capillary. Propolis is widely used for the treatment related to allergies, cough, and everything. That's why kalau boleh uh, at your home ataupun dekat rumah, kalau boleh letakkan madu dekat dalam rumah. Uh, bukan madu yang tu eh, nanti orang perempuan marah saya. Letakkan madu yang the real madu. Letak dekat dalam apa ni, dekat dalam peta ais. Because of kalau anak-anak kita really have really bad coughing, don't go to the clinic first. And then get the get the honey and then give the honey first i think that is the best treatment before you go to the chemical up any medication and so on yeah all right and then this is the stillus bee farm okay basically when you do your 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 research in in bees you must have your own farm okay this is my farm okay in bukit go in kuantan all right again i try to monitor this uh, this what this um, this how they harvest uh, harvest the the what harvested the, the honey and so on okay this is masa mula-mula dulu i pun takut duduk jauh-jauh je tengok kan. Ah, tapi sekarang it's not like macam takut lagi lah sekarang ni kita boleh friend, hi friends. When we ask uh, if I need to 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 harvest uh, your honey today is it alright? Okay, dia 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 apa tu dia akan give you give you the 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 honey will give you the the way. Sorry, the bees will give you the way and then you can you can harvest your honey straight away. Okay? Okay, this is another 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 what another um farm uh, in Agro Park in Kuantan. Okay, this is the, the group from uh, Uniza. Okay, Uniza, they are coming. They are coming to the to the to the farm, and then they need to set up. Okay, set up the the farm uh, in in what in uh, Uniza Moss, because so they need to 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 try to come up with the income generation for the masjid. Okay, I think of course, I think this is the really good for student because of now people now they are not they what they are not intend to buy the honey just along the street because walaupun you ni sejujur mana pun. Memang you ni jujur, you ambil honey ni daripada ladang. Of course, you cakap. Tapi because of one of people make it really bad things, orang dah tak percaya yang madu tu adalah madu asli. Okay? Ha, jadi, the best now for you to do your entrepreneurial, the commercialization adalah you buka ladang, uh, invite the people come to the to the what, to the farm, alright? Invite the people come the, to the farm. Sometimes, you know, I'm really happy because of they're not coming only one. They bring all the families. Okay, this is what we call the agro tourism and edu tourism concept. Okay, when 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 they bring the family come 
uh, come uh, and then coming to your to your to your farm, you can get three three what three charges from from the farm. One is entrance fee. The second one you you what you rental your pump. Okay, this is my experience. I give the pump to the to the, to this to this uh, group of family. They just check 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 check. Sometimes you know, and then people when the, the next people need to use, okay, and then the pump is still with them. And then you can charge, you know, you can charge the pump. And then, and then, and then the third charge you can get is when they're bottling themselves. Meaning that when you, when they go, when they're going out from the from the farm, they are really confident that the, 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 the honey that they harvested is actually is real honey, not is fake honey. That is another kinds of of business that you can make money. I challenge the student when you when you when you graduate, you try to open this these kinds of business. Of course, you will never to 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 to, to find any other job up to uh, outside. Yeah, trust me. Okay, okay. This is another another um, uh, kinds of uh, 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 farm. Okay, okay. This is I need to test every time, but this is warning. Eh? Don't uh, when you when you use your straw, you you what you um, uh, you harvested directly from the from the from the pot. Okay, make sure that don't take too much, because of inside honey they have a lot of potassium. Okay, potassium is actually is is not really good to our body if you take apa uh, tu uh, in really high dosage. Sometimes telinga you akan jadi merah. Okay, because of they can cair kan darah. This is not good because of the best dosage to the human body is about uh, five milligram per meal. Satu sudu kecil tu. That is the best for 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 human body. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is uh, my intent. Okay, we do the research everything dekat farm. Kita tak buat dekat lab. Kita buat dekat farm. So, dia buat dekat situ. Jadi, dia boleh dia boleh ada the variation of of study. Okay, ni, this is apa ni student yang dekat jeli. Nanti kita ada banyak 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 area. Nanti kita akan buat di sana lah. Okay, this is the concept of agro tourism and edu tourism concept, which is if you can see here. Okay, many people come. Okay, to to see directly to to what to harvest the the what. And then for this one monthly. Okay, approximately you can get the the profit from here. The gross is about uh, about nine to ten thousand per month. Okay, nine to ten thousand per month. Okay, because of, if you have your half, you can open section by section. If the section still still not 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 full, you can go to the second section, and then you can go to the third section. All right. Okay, they are really happy because of they they what they receiving uh, really real honey. Okay, all right. Okay, this is another another group as well. They are coming to the to the farm and then they harvested by themselves and then they bottling themselves. Okay, okay, this is some of the research uh, development that we conducted uh, uh, previously. Okay, which is the this is the problem. Eh? This is the problem. The limited availability and increasing price of pure honey has led to the problem of honey adulteration and production of artificial honey in the market. Okay, adulteration. You know the other trend, right? Because they 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 what they do the the what the um, uh, additional to to other kinds of syrup. Okay, this is adulteration. Okay, the second uh, problem is adulteration activity of honey has increased the awareness among the honey consumers about the quality and purity of the commercial honey in the market, and adulteration is immoral act of pro producers by adding sugar syrup into natural product. This is not this is not good because one people and then they will involve many people that really really what really focus really what really um, uh, dedicated. Uh, to 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 what to do the to, to do the real uh, production of honey yeah you know what i mean okay this is the pure honey and adulterated honey what is actually is a pure honey adulterated honey this is pure honey organic and natural honey made naturally should be free from any food ingredient okay the the adulterated honey is actually addition of sucrose addition of industrial oh. sorry okay and then uh, and then feeding the bee with the sugar during the main nectar period. Ini uh, yang yang I catch up tadi. Dia dia pergi uh, chat kan apa tu uh, sugar dekat dinding, potong pisang dan sebagainya just to make sure that okay you go there, get the sugar from there. And then come back to the to the hive, eh? Okay, next we make uh, faster, eh? Okay, this is analysis to detect adulter adulteration. This is the classical method, characterization of honey, physiochemical analysis, enzymatic analysis, microbial analysis. Okay, this is more, more, more about the, a bit, a, a bit technical, a bit more science, and then advanced method is electrochemical analysis, still layer chromatography, carbon isotopy, anti the isotope ratio. I will describe all the things and then publish in the in the what in the food control journal. Uh, I think the Q1 journal impact with three point uh, two five two one, 
and then just just to discuss about this advanced methods of of the analysis and it will show later eh? okay this is the characterization of honey okay the sample collection the physicochemical the enzymatic analysis this is the microbial analysis okay this is when we when we need to do the the what the research this is the first thing that we need to do the research okay sometimes pernah ada orang kata betul ke dok kita nak makan apa ni nak minum apa ni hani ni kena pakai sudu plastik kena pakai sudu besi dan sebagainya okey setakat ni ai tak pernah jumpa lagi dalam literature kena pakai plastik kena pakai besi okey satu lagi kena pakai mancis kalau mancis tu kita gendam dekat dalam madu bila kita goreng dia menyala tu oh benda tu is actually is real hani tak pernah lagi saya dengar eh ha, itu secara kebetulan jadi jangan percaya the, the best thing if we need to know the fake or not fake is actually we need to do the analysis alright of course kalau kita kalau kita travel berjalan dan sebagainya mana ada masa kita nak hantar ke lab betul but now we are try to, uh, now we are now we are developing okay the the kit we call the biosensor kit is like macam pregnancy kit and then we just drop the apa tu the, the honey and then they will give the the bacaan sama ada dua line ke ataupun satu line sorry eh the two line tu is for the pregnancy kit maybe we we will we'll do because the 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 what the prototype the, the prototype now is under devel, the development Then we try to to do uh, 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 as best as we can, and then this is uh, this research is actually is collaborate with the Mardi. Okay, okay. This is the the sampling uh, location. Okay, last time we do the the sample code from Pahang, Selangor, Kedah, Kuala Lumpur, but we are not doing for the Kelantan last time because we know we notice that Kelantan is the uh, most uh, main producer of stainless honey in Malaysia. All right. Okay, ni because of kita tahu di Kelantan ni semua dia punya madu tu semua original. Kita tak nak kita tak nak buat research kat sini. Jadi kita go to the Pahang tu selalu Pahang mungkin tak tak apa ni tak tak ori jadi kita uh, kita dah dapatkan sampling location tu from Pahang Selangor. Okey. Apa ter, apa terjadi? Of course. Kalau kita tengok sebenarnya secara azalinya naturallynya madu kelulut ni is actually is sour. Dia memang masam. Kalau kita tengok daripada pH pun the the pH level is below than below than 3 below than 4. Okay, this is the acidic, okay, acidic, not alkaline, all right? Okay, this is for the moisture, Fa, Ec, Ash, and HMF. HMF is hydrometal sulfur. Eh? Okay, I think we need to move forward. Okay, I think this is all the data. Okay, but I need to share with you guys about the the product later on. Yeah. Okay, I think this is the result. The result shows that the pH, moisture content, free ability, electrical conductivity, and H content are quite similar for all sample. Of course. Because of kenapa itu kita kata kenapa masa kita pergi ke Cameron Highland kita makan apa ni uh, strawberry di di apa tu di di Cameron Highland the taste is very nice very sweet bila kita bawa balik ke Kelantan bila kita bawa balik ke Johor kita rasa the taste tu is totally sour what will be what what happen actually ah this is we need to think why sama lah juga dengan apa tu dengan madu that's why Those people when they need to feel like really nice uh, kelulut honey, they need to li take life, okay, inside the pole. You can feel only I think about five minutes when you open the pole, when you feel the the what the honey, you can feel like really sweet during that time. Only five minutes. When the oxidation happen, uh, this is naturally when the oxidation happen, and then the honey will go back to the naturally, and then the, you can feel like really sour. Uh, I took concept there. Yeah? Uh, you will 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 do the the, the, the the experiment, okay? Generally, the parameters are influenced by the geographical, of course. Kalau katakan bunga tu banyak bunga dan sebagainya, that's why bunga yang terbaik setengah orang kata is pokok mata apa tu? Air mata pengantin. Okay, ha, nama 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 pokok pun sedap. Air mata pengantin, kan? Ha, satu lagi pokok apa ni? Pokok ara. Okay, ha, that is dia punya the, the good fit stock lah. Good, the good fit stock for the for the for the honey. Okay. Alright, uh, in a good quality honey, the fructose, okay, dalam honey ni, dia ada fructose, dia ada glucose, okay, that's why, uh, this is uh, uh, other, other, other type of study, some study uh, conducted by the USM and, and UMT, okay, which is, kenapa bila, they, when they consume the, the, what, the clulut honey, the level of diabetic, okay, will be decreased, okay, when you consume the madu tualang, for example, the level of diabetic will be increased, why? Okay, this is because of the fructose level, sucrose level, and glucose level. Okay, I don't want to discuss here because of if I need to discuss here, I need to I need to uh, to conduct another seminar just only for the for the clulut. Okay, inshallah next yeah. Okay, uh, this is the enzymatic analysis. Of course, when you talk about the honey inside the honey, they got the enzyme. Okay, that's why one of my product. Okay, I have my 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 what my uh, my honey and then I put the tongkat ali. You know the tongkat ali, huh? The man additive power. 
Okay, uh, the man that is powerful. Because of when you when you put inside the the what because of wooden is a cellulose because they have the cellulose cellulose cell wall, right? And then inside the honey they got the enzyme, and then this hydrolysis will be happen. Okay, and then they will they will release that really nice, really what really good active compound. You recommend them directly from the tonka ali, and then they they mix together with the honey. When you drink honey. And then you can feel like, wow! Now I'm the hogger. Now I'm the, I'm the, I'm the really power, power people. Okay, I don't want to talk about uh, the really bad thing, but, but they will give you really, really good synergy for your body. Okay, this is really good. But one of my, my what my uh, friend just now asking me because of in 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 what in in my house, my wife, okay, she used the honey just to do just to clean the the what the 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 the, the, the face, okay? Because of course, because of when you use the honey, of course. Siapa nak kan Kalau you guna honey You mesti nak guna sabun yang mahal-mahal Just to wash your face and so on Isn't it? But in reality Because in really scientific thing When you use honey Actually they will remove They make it your Your what? Your your skin uh, pH Maintain at the pH heaven Naturally until morning Okay And then no bacteria No everything will attack your 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 face This is how you need to maintain Your Your cheek Your skin Young always. Ah, balik nanti ambil madu tampal. Dah betul basuh. Eh, try cuba try. Okay. Ah, this is another another claim from the from the exam lah. Eh? Okay. Jadi we we go uh, ni uh, a bit a bit faster. Okay. This is another another research that we we conducted before. Okay. Okay. This is the the, the accepted publication that I I I I feel that this is until a uh, ten times submission, ten times rejected. Okay, now I receive uh, the the what the the the, um, the signs of uh, acceptance uh, last year. It's really really hard to 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 publish in this food control because oh, we need to tell to the world that the stingless honey from Malaysia is good. All right, and then just ask them to come, try to to fill our uh, 150 species, and then based on the adulteration technique that we use, and then this is this is like. Review paper, not not the article paper. Review is good because of you give your ideas to to everybody. Yeah. Okay. This is the uh, some of the commercialized product. Now we talk about commercialized because of when you do your upstream just now, and then you need to go for the upstream. Okay. For the for the upstream, of course, many of the beekeepers, uh, people really expert in the field, uh, to to do the upstream. Now they are really expert. What we actually I try to involve in this in this what in the commercialization. When I try to uh, produce my uh, uh, soft gel, because of I think no in the market during that time we produce uh, honey, we encapsulated the honey inside the soft gelatin uh, a capsule, for example. But in two years time, when I when I when I uh, throw this product to the market, Alhamdulillah, now this product is already in Maldives. Now this product is already in Brunei. Okay, because of you did you because of inside my my what my, my my soft gelatin they have three three things they got the olive oil inside they got the habato soda the black seed oil and then they got the honey, all right. Uh, I think this is this is really good. okay. At the same time, for the stingless bee honey product, I make it the honey banana powder. You know the honey banana powder, because for example, like when you ask uh, banana shake, okay, banana shake juice from from the restaurant. Okay, normally what they, they, they do is actually they will peel the banana, you know, put it into the into the what into the blender, okay, mix with with the what, with the milk and then prepare for the honey. But now you can use, you know, like a really uh, the uh, pisang yang dah really really what really uh, uh, you scrap to the to the what to the rubbish bin. For example, like 50 cents, 60 cents per kilo. You can take it, make it the paste, and then you mix with the honey. And then you can sorry, and then you can you can make it the, uh, the the banana powder. Okay, you try to imagine from the 50 or 80 cents of a per kilo of banana, you can sell this powder at price 42 ringgit per kilo. Okay, this is how you increase your 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 level of commercialization. Okay, I did before. Even one of the Arab people, Arab uh, the owner of the restaurant, tell, tell me, can you produce me 100 kilo? I need to bring to the Arab. Okay, because of my fr my family, my parents always eat, always drink banana every day, and I said, oh, I need to have like really, really, you know, really big farm banana, and then to, to supply all this. Maybe in in in, in what in, in in UMK we can do this later on, yeah. 
Okay, I think this is uh, this is uh, the, the product just now I mentioned to you just now the Royal Soft Gel Stingless Bee Honey because of in the market right now we just only, uh, we just have only the soft gel for fish oil only the omega three fish oil but no honey at, at all. Okay, this is three in one. Okay, uh, I put I put Z quad is because of my name Z Z is stand for Ziad. And then actually I need to put K, K-U-A-T, kuat Because makan ni, Z akan jadi kuat Because of, we cannot put, because of this is under the the what the uh, requirement from the my IPO You cannot you cannot put kuat, you need to see kuat, kuat Okay, kelulut untuk sehat Okay Alright, okay, this is the, the product is already in the in the, in the, what, in the market Okay, I think when, when, we, when we, okay One thing about when you do your commercialization for the upstream product You must to confident Whatever you do, not only for the for the for the commercialization, you need to always confident. You need to bring your product directly. Of course, you will receive like really bad feedback. Okay, people will 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 what will um, will uh, will blame you and so on. But this thing is actually how you how you need to be like a really good entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, this is the process uh, to do the uh, to do the what the encapsulation. This is really challenging. Because of the sunnatullah of the of the of the honey, they cannot make it the honey with other material. Honey is honey. It cannot mix with the oil. It cannot mix with the water. Okay, because of they have a special molecular weight. Okay, but I trust with the with the verse uh, with the with the verse uh, surah just now. Okay, uh, when you do your research, because I did this uh, by two master students to do that. When we play around with the pre-processing water, we remove the water up to eight percent. Okay, we do. We use the homogenizer pressure agitation up to 10 bar, and a stabilized product after mixing process. And then we, we we receive. They have no three separated uh, three separated area uh, three separated material. Okay, and then we use uh, we, we we get the the, the soft gel. Okay, previously when uh, when I received the the what the comment from the from the OEM company that produced that produce my what my my product, they tell me, Prof, you are the people number 10. Previously. The, the, the product cannot be make it is and fail. Okay, I, I need to try. I need to try. Okay, when I try after one week, he called me. Okay, congratulations. You can put your product under Malaysian Book of Record because of the product can be can be what can be uh, produced and then can be can what can be sell to the to the market. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Of course, when you when you do your research, when you do your product, you need to IP your product. Alhamdulillah. Uh, during that time, my IPO, okay, offering 25,000 grand, okay, 25,000 ringgit grand for you to pattern your product. Okay, I take this opportunity, go to the, go to the my IPO, get this grant. Alhamdulillah, I receive the utilities pattern, okay, which is I pattern the soft gel capsule and method of preparing that off. Basically, this product is already patented, okay, and then this is the, the, the letter, the certificate, the certificate of filing. Okay, now we are waiting for the for the for the for the for the uh, real um, uh, certificate uh, to get this product is officially uh, 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 patented. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, this is another 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 unit because I don't want to discuss about about this about this uh, machine, the mobile uh, extracted uh, spinning vacuum uh, process to remove the water from honey. Okay, maybe this this is the. This is the mobile that I, I asked uh, Dato uh, if to discuss with uh, with uh, with the Dato friends in UMP just to bring to to, to UMK, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, this is the unit. Okay, all right. I think this is the the, the benefit of the soft gel, additional food supplement, halal, good manufacturing, and so on. Yeah. All right, and then this is the benefit. Of course, already two years uh, in the in the market, and then I received like a really good feedback. Okay, this is the another. This is some of the feedback: high in vitamin prevention and treatment various disease, cancer, asthmatic, overcome. Of course, like my brother had a uh, really bad uh, diabetic uh, disease. Okay, uh, previously he had about uh, I think 17 or 18 level of glucose, but now Alhamdulillah he not. Consume any anyone any 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 medication from the from the hospital. They just only concentrate more on the honey on this product. Alhamdulillah, now it maintains up to six and five m six. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. All right. Okay. This is another things that I need to share with you guys. Okay. Basically, I don't want to share this one, but this is like my my what my fadl kifaya. I need to share with you guys. If you can see here. If we, for example, for the harga madu kulut, if we sell this harga madu kulut, for example, 
the madu kelulut now the price is about 100 kg 100 ringgit per kg all right and then the cost for example if you need to produce the soft gel for for example 100000 soft gel it costs you about only 4 kg only and then the cost if you sell the honey itself you just only can get only 480 ringgit but with the 4 kg of of what of honey and then when you produce the 100 pieces of soft gel when you bottle or you, you bottling the the soft gel like 50 capsule in one bottle with the price 80 ringgit per bottle you can get your your what your sales value at 120000 you can imagine okay somebody can request somebody can recon me somebody can imagine how much that i sell for the soft gel during this 2 years time all right uh, so it's really really good really good really good income really good money okay all right okay and then this is our 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 what our potential our projection if you go for the for the what for the 5 million of capsule all right and then you can get more than 8 million apa ni, uh, uh, income and so on okay this is how they the, the what the innovation of value okay the innovation of value from upstream to downstream product okay what i need to share with you guys don't just only do the r and d you need to finish the cycle for until finish r and d c and e okay research and development commercialization and entrepreneurship okay jangan kita stop hanya r and d and then macam datuk kata tadi lah we have macam like prof rahas said we they just like invest a lot of money everything for us to do the to do the what to do the research but by by the end just only for the paper okay i think for only if you publish only paper like people like entrepreneurs like in the rural area they basically they cannot read the paper how you translate the paper is actually how you do the product for them and so on all right okay <clears throat> then this is uh, i told you just now the tongkat ali madu kelulut and then i call that i call this product as a fermented organic viagra okay it's really powerful okay all right uh, and then this is the honey banana powder Okay, uh, this is the process I, I share with you guys from the from the fruit of honey. We do the we do the paste and everything. Okay, this is the product. Okay, okay, this is like in the in the in the bulk production. Okay, okay, this is some of the soap as well. We extract the herbal. We make we formulate together with the honey, and then we can produce this this uh, this soap. I'm not I I I not explain this detail. And then if you need to know about this more, you can see my booth at TE05. Okay. Okay, this is honey lip lip balm. This is the special balm because of you can feel like really sweet. Now, this is the kid always like this because of when they use this lip balm, they can feel like sweet. Okay, ah, this is another, another, another kind. Okay, I try my best last time, try to get the superb Traju finalist. Alhamdulillah, uh, I received the 500k before. Okay, just to pitch uh, this product only for five minutes for 500,000. Okay, not easy, but Alhamdulillah, we managed to secure it. Okay. And then Alhamdulillah, um, just recommended after two, after twice uh, pitch uh, session at MTDC, uh, we received, uh, previously I just applied only CRDF1. CR, CRDF1 uh, allocated just only 500,000 for the market validation. When they review my, my, what, my product, this product is actually is done for the market, uh, uh, market validation. And then they presume that this uh, uh, project, uh, this research is actually is go on the, uh, is already beyond that, which is the market uh, penetration, uh, marketing uh, uh, product. And then they offer me the MTDC CRDF2, which is amounted $4 million. Inshallah, make me a wish, uh, the best good luck for me to just uh, uh, fill in the form. And then Inshallah, this is, uh, we will give to the, to the UMK and then insyaallah datuk we try to do before datuk datuk nilah apa uh, di datuk gone and so on we try to make make sure that this formula is will be banking to the to the umk insyaallah eh all right uh, this is another customer feedback maybe we can share this uh, this letter the eczema diabetic and then tuberculosis uh, digestive problem energy booster gout okay this is the pelakon ni okay uh, bob lockman okay now until now uh, he still use my my product Dulu dia duduk memasak dekat kampung baru sekarang ni dia dah boleh dia dah boleh berdiri dan dia boleh berjalan ya. Yeah? Alhamdulillah uh, nerve problem. Okay this is some of the event. This is how I can tell you from local to global. Meaning that don't don't what don't afraid. Okay when you feel that your product is the best go for it. 
bawa pergi ke mana-mana. Okay, this is the in uh, in Angsana Johor Bahru. This is in Sri Kembangan. This is in Maha last two years because this Maha we 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 are not joining because of they double up the the what the 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 booth fee. Datuk last time is 4,000 now they increase up to 8,000. Alright, I don't know why. And that's why we we cancelling the the what the 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 what the uh, the business there. Okay, this is in in Brunei last time, which is where my product now is is actually is ordered and demand from the Brunei. Alhamdulillah, this is another another good uh, uh, good what good um, things for the UMK. And then, inshallah, I will, I will try to ask the people from the Brunei come here, just do the sign agreement here, just to make sure that the process of uh, uh, ex uh, uh, what? Uh, export the product to Brunei will be uh, coming through the UMK, inshallah. Yeah. All right, this is in Brunei as well. Okay, this is for the international market. Okay, uh, last time in Maldives, already in Maldives, the, this product. Okay, uh, this is the product labeling. Uh, this product is actually for the local distribution. And then this is, uh, this is from my, my business partner in Brunei. All right, this Brunei distribution. Okay, this is the, the Assalam company from the Brunei. Inshallah, if everything goes fine, we will invite this Assalam company to come to UMK, do like a really a proper uh, signing and so on here, just to make sure that this uh, process will be uh, transferred very well to to the, to the Brunei. Yeah. Uh, next is a future product. Uh, some product still in the in the lab. Okay. This is honey, honey hot balm, honey shampoo, propolis, mineral mineral water, and honey toothpaste. Those uh, have like a really good money. If you need to invest, be the right a really good investor. Okay, come, uh, join me. And then, inshallah, and then you can, we get a really good, 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 good income, inshallah. Thank you very much. I think uh, thank you for this opportunity and your time. I think maybe I'm not still not exceeded the time. Then I will uh, give this floor back to uh, our Prof. Moderator. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Prof. Ziad. Very impressive uh, uh, keynote. Uh, this evening, uh, this afternoon, eh? I think uh, Prof was discussed from the stage one, from the research until to the product. That's what we call translational research. Those not understand, I think after listening to Prof Ziad, you may understand what, what is mean by translational research. Eh? You can see how hard work he put, and he's very amb ambitious. Eh? Before you start the job, but today you go to the international market. I think we can learn a lot. Maybe probably you have to come more and more. Maybe I open uh, one or two questions from the floor. Okay. Just say your name and uh, which faculty you are. Mike, please. So, Prof, thank you very much. He's a very informative and also valu uh, valuable lecture. And I learned a lot of things from your lecture. Of course, not only myself, the audience also learned a lot of things from your lecture. Uh, my question is, you are talking a lot of things about the uh, product in scientific way. Of course, it has the value in the commercial industry also, especially in the pharmaceutical industry. But as you know that the FAO, Food and Agricultural Organization of United Nations, they have set up some goals. It's called Sustainable Development Goals. And most of the Sustainable Development Goals is related to the food and agricultural science. So this honey is one of the part of this. And you are using the natural resources and it should be in the sustainable way. As you know that the population is increased. Right now the world population is 7.4 billion. So it could be maybe 9 billion in 2050. So what do you think in the future prediction? Because you are doing a lot of work on this honey for the sustainable use of these natural resources in uh, sustainable way for this uh, world population, because you are talking about the commercialization from the local to globalization. So what is your idea, or wh what about your prediction in the future, next uh, 2050 or next 2030 for UN vision? I mean the FAO mission and vision for the sustainable development goals. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you. I think that is like really good questions. I think um, if you can see from the trend just now, when I when I, I share uh, the one of the slide just now regarding you know the um, the, the profile of the um, uh, the production of the honey. If you can see from the 2000, I think not only 2016. Okay, since 2006. Okay, if you can see the trend. Okay, all the production is actually, you know, uh, is an uh, increase, right? I think basically now it's like this. I think uh, one of the things how we need to make sure that this, we need to sustain, okay, the honey now is actually how we need actually to give like a really good education to our beekeepers, okay? That is really important, okay? Because of why we need to make sure that we we frequently we frequently uh, uh, what, um, um, uh, try to try to uh, ask them just to maintain try to increase you know increase the the number of colony and everything uh, per year per month and so on because of they are noticing that the price of honey always fluctuated okay for example i have my experience last time when of course when my product is actually when when you when you con when you think about your your what your downstream product for example okay now it's really sellable you know in the market now you still really need the raw materials in it and then when we go straight to the to the what to the to the main resources for the raw material uh, sometimes they actually they don't want to to share with you because of the price of course normally uh, after after okay for the first time when I ask him okay uh, Anche, do, you, do you have any any uh, any honey and I need to buy oh no I don't have any honey and then okay I said okay no problem I'm, I'm going and then after that suddenly after one or two minutes he called me back come okay how much uh, do you want to buy from me okay and then of course I talked to him I, I, I talked to him I buy from him 320 ringgit per kilo he quite he really quite surprised during that time how come you buy from me 320 Normally, people coming to came to me and then asked from me only ninety ringgit per kilo. Okay, when I when I try to introduce the price three hundred twenty ringgit per kilo, they bring me to the store. They can they show me what uh, type of honey that you want. Basically, they have a lot of honey. Okay, inside the store, you know, yeah. Uh, because of because of the problem is because of the honey they have no standard price for the honey in Malaysia. For example, I think not in Malaysia, I think maybe worldwide as well. Meaning that now, when people like us, okay, doc, when people like us, we have the technology, we have the expertise. When we, we try to make it as, as what? As much as we can the product, for example. And then we actually, we can, we can what? We can give really good things back to the, to the beekeepers. Of course, we try to, to increase, you know, the number of hives. Maybe after this, of course, you know, now the palm oil, the price is now is 150 ringgit per ton. Maybe after this, be uh, people in, in plantation. Maybe they don't want to, to, to concentrate in plantation. They will just only go for the for the, for the bee have uh, bee honey production. For example, I think your question just now for me. Okay, what we need to do is we need to give more education to the to the what to our beekeepers so that they can increase the net and then in in government side especially in uh, Ministry of Agriculture and so on, they need to standardize the price so that the people can, can, what, can, can, what, can, can, uh, can have, you know, some sort like, you know, um, uh, uh, energy, you know, to, to prepare these kinds of raw material. Is it an answer your question? Thank you very much, bro. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, um, we are going to move uh, second keynote speaker. Okay, just now I think you all uh, listen from the science perspective eh, and also engineering. But of course, uh, when you come talk about commercialization, almost same, eh? whether science or social science, almost same. Because if you want to go to the market, that's, uh, I was faced a lot of problem. When I invented a product, I won medal, gold medal, everything. But when you go to the industry, that's a big problem. Eh? I think Prof. Ziad already gone through that process. Eh? All right, so now we are going to invite Professor Dr. Raja Susana. Benti Raja Kasim, she will talk about social entrepreneurship as a catalyst role in modeling social impact fund, learning by doing community-based project. Okay, let me uh, talk about herself, a eh? background. I think everybody knows Prof. Susana, eh? she was here for a long time and she was internationally, nationally recognized eh? 
as a social entrepreneurship. Prof. Susanna, I think, holds postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurship from the Cambridge Judge Business School eh, in the Kingdom. Uh, she received a BBA from UKM and a um, Master's from uh, UITM. Uh, she got a PhD from UPM eh, in Knowledge uh, Management. And as you know that uh, Prof. Susanna took an active role in local youth community-based uh, organization and then this advantage group such as disabled student. Eh? And uh, international engagement, uh, actually, she was a visiting scholar at the Babson College. Most of you know Babson College is a very top uh, institution, eh? college in entrepreneurship, USA. And then she was also faculty fellow at the Stanford Technology Venture Program at Stanford University, California, USA. Steering committee at the Cambridge Internet Academic and um, what she do, actually, she was a fo now founding director, eh? uh, startup mentoring and coaching program for the youth entrepreneurship in Malaysia, all right? And uh, she also recognized the leader issues on the youth startup, social innovation, and social entrepreneurship. And uh, Prof. Raja Susana also worked closely cooperation with the Skill Development Division, Ministry of Youth and Sport, Malaysia, and also Division Technical Occasional Ministry of Education. And she has trained, uh, coached more than 200 youth. Right? So I will pass the mic to her. This floor is yours. I hope Prof can share, eh? especially we have a lot of student researcher, how important social entrepreneurship. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Finally, um, I guess um, my speech will not be taking so much long. Datuk, um, I minta izin because I'm rushing for my flight for tomorrow, other presentation. Yeah. So, but somehow or other, we just uh, have to keep this uh, on. Yeah. Uh, very good afternoon to all, especially to our um, yang bahagia, yeah, uh, Datuk Prof. Um, Haji Ibrahim Cik Omar, our Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation, Prof Jasni, yeah, uh, Director for RMO, and also uh, Mr. Professor Dr. Maizan. Um, I think as a researcher of this university, the highlight that have been um, brought forth uh, by our friends here is so much so about the hard sciences. Yeah? So when we talk about social sciences, it could uh, be tackled into different angle. Because um, at this juncture, I believe University of Malaysia Kelantan has an uh, important role to play towards the community and society. So I like to uh, share with all of you about the importance of um, understanding entrepreneurship in different angles. So we would like to embrace social entrepreneurship and how could that expand as a catalytic role in modeling uh, social impact fund. So in this case, we would also like to connect uh, so and so number of projects that uh, happen to be uh, so close to our universities. Uh, by tackling the learning, by doing, it could give a lot of values. And um, I believe also it can bring uh, more impactful and um, it can uh, adjust yeah, a lot of things in our teaching and learning and also the process of entrepreneurial values. Yeah? Um, as a proud member of um, the research university in this uh, UMK, I think we are so much passionate about maintaining our entrepreneurial identity. Yeah? So in this sense, we have to create a lot of innovation, we have to have a sense of creativity, and then it would have to be captured in some of our translational research. So in these three days, I think a lot of opportunities I count to numbers of my students who are doing research methodologies in my class to be here so that they can have a lot of overview about what's going on. So it's the role of everybody to understand what the researchers at universities are doing so that it could give you an overview about your learning process. Yeah? So um, when we talk about translational research, there could be a seemingly straightforward uh, task yeah, in terms of um, taking many years, look at what Prof Ziad has done on the honeybee. I've tasted one, but I never tasted the one in Kelantan. 
when I, I have a session on community in Sabah, we brought about 20 researchers from UK, and I think one of the best product of honey stingless bee was in Kilu, uh, Kulu, Kulu Tuaran. I think the taste is so good. I, that was the very first time ever I had uh, a chance. So in uh, making the commercialization process, right? So you have to seek at different angle because at social science, we are also interacting with the same face, but along the line, what more in my talk today is uh, to uh, get the involvement of socioeconomic, yeah, environmental issues, and not forgetting about communicating with uh, other important uh, communities. So uh, allow me to uh, begin with, I would like to draw on the context, yeah, uh, the project background and the benefits for Malaysia in terms of how we can go more about social entrepreneurship how could we create a new value of social impact program yeah, that could give... Uh, we talk about, a lot about high impact research. We talk a lot, a lot about translational. But how could we go about modelling those and how could social finance come into the picture to help us to ease yeah, the process? So uh, I would also touch a little bit on the social finance because social finance overview will bring signs of a strong... Um, grows on the horizon yeah so learning from this example in the perspective of the global it will give us a number of reasons to celebrate our own uniqueness in that point i think we need to associate some of the good local examples and bring the values in uh, bringing you mk's uh, differences and uh, like Datuk has been mentioning about you know the storytelling time on blue ocean strategy i think umk has had to play their role this is the time that we have to bring a change, yeah? So our pathway to intervention programs, numbers of inter intervention programs, um, is to showcase our ability to redesign and also to regenerate our own values, yeah? So learning at UMK uh, will offer an innovative ways. And then the, I will also touch on the social impact funding model that uh, we have been sitting around together, not alone in my research, but we have connected to other ministry agencies and taking the best global examples to put the model in place. So that is actually bring me to the reality to meet the objectives of my talk today. Yeah? So first thing and foremost, uh, what are the prevalent social issues happen within uh, Malaysian context? Yeah? And then the, um, what input can be gathered from the public, the private, and also the social enterprise sectors? What are the activity chains and how university will take the opportunity um, in social entrepreneurship move? And what nature of social impact funding model can be formulated in this sense? So the reality is that social issues has its own complexity. Now, these are actually the complexity that drives, yeah? Uh, the move of the social enterprise because it has always need to work along with the private sectors and the government. Now, when we did this, we have been sitting and digging down number of uh, content analysis to work on the local example because number of studies, number of uh, cases within social entrepreneurship courses have been uh, widely used a Western perspective, but it is not in my class. Yeah, so in my class we have. Uh, you know, getting a lot of contributions and also my involvement throughout what happens, uh, uh, the output and outcome from our research activities. It gives us a clear directions about some of the important target segment in Malaysia yeah, that deal with social issues. You heard about this, uh, you know, committing crime individuals, yeah, young people who have uh, involved in drug, alcohol and substance abuse what nature of uh, obstacles in the employment, yeah? in other obstacles on healthcare and also in education, and also to the quality, life and living conditions of the people. And uh, with all those um, important elements, that gives a value where the element of social entrepreneurship comes in and it cannot be working in isolation. There must be a model that uh, support each other so the contributions of the government, the university, the community, yeah, and the social entrepreneurship itself will bring a lot of important uh, elements of sharing of resources. So we could optimize the process, and from there, you know, the interactions would create a lot of opportunity to socialize. From the socialization, 
we also can create innovation. So that is where element of social innovations come in, and we could leverage the innovation of the capacity. So as a university, I think um, I would also like uh, to extend uh, a lot of um, perceptions about um, our role yeah, in terms of uh, bringing the value of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I was, I really remember uh, meeting some of the top people in the ministry yeah, when I presented uh, some of my ideas. Uh, I think they look at University of Malaysia Kelantan as an important role to play around with social entrepreneurship. Yeah? So maybe we start, we need to start from now on to tackle the local issues. Yeah? So a practical example of this um, important element that relates to all of uh, this angle will give us uh, an overview about doing the program. So we can't be doing the program um, you know, easily without the help of this uh, assistance of finance. So this is where actually we want to bring along uh, the understanding about social finance overview. When we talk about finance, right, it's, it's the most important aspect in our research that young people of today would always like to raise. Yeah? They have limitations in terms of access to finance, in terms of uh, financial uh, status and standing that would limit their opportunity to grow in the area that they are keen to venture. So in the aspect of social finance, uh, let me just a quick overview define. That is methods on how one or organizations yeah, uh, could raise the financing yeah, for the purpose of um, funding initiatives. So the funding initiatives is actually bringing or give an impact to the value of both social and economic returns. Yeah? So when we do this, we are not uh, be doing this um, you know, looking at one angle. There are examples of best examples in the whole world yeah, to start with what is that on social impact. Yeah? So in UK, for example, when I study in Cambridge, right, I have to connect uh, my final project to these social enterprise uh, activities. So one of the best examples I think the UK has been quoting around the whole world is the success of their big so society capital. Yeah? So these big society capitals have been allowed to use the dom dominant bank accounts and the, the fund will be channeled into a lot of uh, activities involving charities program. And then they also have this, uh, a lot of uh, activity with regard to the other uh, intermediary perspective that could um, uh, enhance the betterment of uh, the, the, the people. Yeah? For example, like the social impact bond. Yeah? Uh, it was launched in a collaboration with the Ministry of Justice. So in this case, I think they have raised about pound 4.9 million from private sectors. And what they do with this funding is actually to help those uh, prisoners yeah, uh, to move around with their new life. So in Australia, we have another example uh, about the government uh, creating a lot, a lot of initiatives. Yeah? So this includes these... Um, community development, financial institutions with regard to the um, other area, yeah? uh, and also the social ventures. I've been saying it wrongly, the community development financial institution was the one who been earlier, yeah? face initiated by the US government. Yeah? Um, and then the, what they do is actually <clears throat> to help uh, the scalable social enterprise to move around with their initiatives and intervention. Now, yesterday, right, yesterday during the closing of Maha, I think the Deputy Prime Minister has made announcement about the Malaysian food program. Have you heard about it? Anybody? None. <laughs> okay, the Malaysia Food Bank program, yeah, uh, is actually to introduce uh, issues to address food waste in our country. You know, uh, on average, yeah, some Malaysian throws almost one kilogram food daily. What happened? Yeah, so we have a lot of um, issues in terms of uh, food waste. So by early 2019, I think there will be a law introducing to combat all these foods such as bread, vegetables, yeah, and uh, fruits. 
yeah, which has been regarded as food surplus by the restaurant could be turned, yeah, could be obtained from uh, restaurants, hypermarkets and can be distributed those in the need. So these are actually some of the examples of a good social entrepreneurship. Yeah? So understanding all of these examples is actually bring us to the uh, important terms. I think in business perspective, we have no way of uh, you know, not knowing what is uh, cost-benefit analysis. But what I want to point out here is on the return on investment in the perspective of social value. Yeah? So the social aspect here is actually uh, derives from the methods of calculating uh, the social uh, cash flow yeah, that is measurable in terms of the monetary value. So in what aspect of social cost actually could we uh, make the model happen? Yeah? If let's just say we are trying to combat uh, activities on youth unemployment, yeah? uh, young people who have been involved a lot in uh, at-risk activities, drug addicts, gangsterism and whatnot, the intervention that we could bring about, for example, uh, giving them an opportunity to learn about entrepreneurship could help to replace their negativity. Yeah? So the process of the change happen towards the negativity to the positivity is the value where we could measure the social aspect. So that social aspect is the one we are working to uh, bring about the cause of um, effect yeah? in terms of making the social impact funding workable. So these are actually some of the important uh, content data analysis we extracted from the uh, several uh, involvement of ministries involving uh, obstacles to general education among rural communities in the country. Yeah? So if we are looking on the perspective of um, social issue here, yeah, there appear to be a lot of assumption on the cost sides of the government. Yeah? The government is uh, playing uh, a lot of um, needy activities that could be uh, bringing about raising um, education yeah? standards for rurals and how actually they are going to encourage uh, participation and enro enrollment in formal education. So some of this important angle here is to tackle the activity that could provide values and bring in the um, saving of the costing of the government. Yeah? So uh, this uh, perspective is actually uh, can help uh, along with us to uh, offer a new opportunity in terms of what kind of interventions could we offer to the uh, move of social entrepreneurship. Yeah? So basically, uh, my research uh, has been doing a lot about young people in the marginalized communities. So we have been tackling poverty, yeah, because the marginalized communities are those from the low-income background. We tackle the urban poor and also those ru uh, living in the rural areas. Yeah, this lower-income uh, group has a lot actually to uh, bring about uh, opportunities. Yeah where if, let's just say, we are able to offer uh, an innovative solutions to uplift their socio-economic living, we should be able to bring a better future for their life. So the role of social enterprise here uh, in the process of making that happen is to move around the activities of learning by doing. Yeah? So in the aspect of learning by doing too, we always like to encourage uh, the process of delivering our social uh, an economy impact program, yeah, and also to what extent actually we should be able to uh, tackle the uh, social impact uh, funding capacity accessibility, yeah. So in this case, uh, maybe by um, uh, putting uh, suggestions to the government to start encouraging multinational companies, the big uh, organisations, yeah, to allocate aside some of their uh, corporate social responsibility budget so that they could mobilize the activity of the uh, social uh, entrepreneurship to happen. So in the sense of uh, innovation solutions, we should become a driver for this uh, activity. Yeah? And with all this impact uh, value of the program, right, we keep on sustaining the process and it could bring the value of the social return on investment. <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, these are actually one of the examples when we talk about the abuse of women. Yeah? Uh, abuse of women is one of the um, issues uh, that uh, appear to be uh, important also to look at. Um, because every time when this uh, situation happens, right, there will be a lot of costs incurred to several ministries. Yeah? So by having this uh, activity, a key uh, social touch point, uh, known to the understanding of the students in class, right? So they will uh, try to also look on the opportunity side. Yeah, what uh, social entrepreneurship ideation could they offer in terms of tackling, for example, temporary shelter homes for the victims? Yeah, what nature of uh, uh, domestic nursing care can they uh, work along? Yeah, maybe some of these um, motivational talk, yeah? some of these activity that could uh, bring another uh, value. Yeah? Welfare to assist those uh, below poverty line, for example. So opportunity recognitions based on local social issues, I would say, bring a lot about understanding the real issue that happened in Malaysia, yeah? in our country. So I just give way to the Azan. Yeah? Okay, let us just move on. Um, Dato, this is actually one of the um, examples that we have been using throughout uh, our research process. 
and um, it has been given a lot of values in terms of um, how we connect, yeah, uh, the innovation toolkit um, in the process of identifying our uh, value propositions and also uh, ideations of the project, yeah. So we uh, absorb, uh, I think one of the world's best example from IDEO, it is based, uh, created from uh, design thinking elements from Stanford universities. And we combine with the social enterprise tests, yeah, uh, which come from our um, research project. So this value has uh, a lot to think about how students should start uh, tackling some of the important local issues and connect the idea and build up uh, you know, the process of uh, put empathy and make the design of the uh, idea happen. Yeah? So in that process, I think we have uh, absolutely um, completed a lot of uh, important values in terms of delivering um, our ideations to the communities. Yeah? Um, students have been engaged into um, various new skills uh, activities yeah, that have uh, put them into ideas of co-creating knowledge and at the same time they put toge the spirit of togetherness in developing a lot of others entrepreneurial values yeah so by engaging into this program they also learn on how to measure social uh, return on investment and i would say one of the angle that we have uh, put forth is having a heropreneur challenge yeah and then some uh, 50 uh, product yeah uh, ideations have been uh, bring uh, the community to the universities and the ideas I think have uh, a lot of uh, impactful um, you know connections to the uh, communities uh, aspect and at the same time they also learn about social impact and investment now I would like to draw another example about getting into the social impact funding model uh, in this case, uh, we would like to um, tackle yeah, uh, important elements with regard to the first thing and foremost on the policy and the uh, formulation uh, framework um, that connects the institutional and in particular with uh, our universities and maybe create the financing uh, aspect, yeah, how actually the, the uh, access to finance could be mobilised and offered and how uh, opportunities can be exploited towards the social entrepreneurship uh, programs and get all this connected to the uh, relevant communities. Yeah? Malaysia has been uh, participating, I think, in quite a number of our research opportunities. Um, I think uh, some of the data of ours have been used by the Economic and Intelligent, Intelligent Units. So in overall score of middle-income countries in, in the world, Malaysia stood the second yeah, in terms of the whole of the overall score on the framework development. So policy and institutional framework, we, we were ranked first. Yeah? Also with the entrepreneurship, while financing, we were ranked fourth. Yeah? In the society aspect, also we were ranked fourth. Now this social impact of funding model is actually testing about to what extent the country is uh, supporting social entrepreneur and also those who are keen to um, understand about the social cause and to what extent the government is able to provide uh, all this um, framework in hand. Yeah? So in bringing all these aspects of a social impact funding model, right, these are some of the elements that uh, we have uh, proposed yeah, uh, to bring the value of local nature so that it covers the flavors of the nature of our societies. Yeah? So one of the examples in recognizing opportunities, yeah, in recognizing opportunities is to bring uh, the value to, towards maybe um, new venture creation. Yeah? We have to take a look at the number of data and statistics available and this could actually offer us a new market yeah so look at the example here 17,000 yeah as reported in the uh, Ministry of Education blueprint this is not uh, uh, a figure that I pick up from the sky yeah all is actually data um, that we have uh, extracted from uh, evidence yeah 17,000 do not complete secondary school 
well, 85% of these dropouts come from low-income household. And in particular, important, the orang asli students appear to give a significant uh, issues in terms of the dropout rates. Yeah? So about 30% of them only yeah, complete the secondary school. So in this process, right, students will start to innovate, to think about the best intervention or ideation they could come up with. Yeah? And it could be like uh, having um, uh, an offering of special programs, yeah? or maybe c uh, connect uh, our activities and complement what could uh, the education be improved. So in conclusion, Right, in conclusion, uh, taking some of the world best examples, bringing together the whole community, society, yeah, government, uh, private sectors, I think we should be able to bring our value to what brings communities yeah, into a lot of opportunity for us to start creating social entrepreneurship best program. Yeah? So the social impact funding model a lot actually has to contribute to empower the young people, especially those who are in a need, right? I think even in our university, we always need pre-seed funding capital to start running our own venture. Like this morning, when the vice chancellor was uh, tackling all students will be completing the degree with startup or have a company, I was like wondering the support that we are going to start. We should start thinking from now, initiating all of this course because the world best example has already made a success story because we just don't start anywhere as of now we are just more on theoretical basis of you know bringing our entrepreneurship values even if we have product the product that we have now come from the research process that would take a while for us to spread you know, our success story to the whole world maybe the value that we could bring now is to tickle yeah a lot about opportunities that other universities have yet to venture. So UMK can bring their own perspective, yeah? So this is where we throw our uniqueness, our different diversity, and we should be excellent in achieving this process. So thank you very much for listening to my, you know, nothing else important but to bring uh, the nature of our university, Major Kelantan, uh, to connect us to social entrepreneurship. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, um, thank you, Prof. Donna. Okay, I think you are listening to two uh, distinct speakers, right? Eh? Uh, but I will open a question for Prof. Susanna because she's talking about social entrepreneurship, right? Especially for the social science, because uh, many years back, eh, social science always think that they left out, you know, they cannot, you know, involved in the business or entrepreneurship. But today, uh, Prof. Susanna opened her eye. Uh, not only for the researcher and for the student, uh, I think some students here, Prof. Uh, yeah. okay. So you should uh, take this opportunity that uh, how you go into the social entrepreneurship. And there are many ways to do that, okay? So, question from the floor, maybe from the students, researchers, to Prof. Susanna. I also, Prof. Ziyad, maybe. Are you all <laughs> wake up? Are you hungry? I think we just have lunch. Three hours back. Any questions? Uh, I have a question to Prof. Ziyad, right? Uh, Prof, I think I'm here almost six years uh, in UMK. So I understand UMK is an entrepreneurship university. Focus, right? Focus university. And I will talk to the ground, to the student, right? especially uh, student for the uh, entrepreneurship. Right? They like to do business, you know. They want to set a company. From the way you talk just now, very impressive, uh, that you have product, how do you want to bring the student, uh, Prof, into the campus? I think this morning, VC also said about that, uh, you know, student to be entrepreneur. Of course, yours is more research-based, you know. It's not like simply jump to the product. You've done research properly, you went through the chemical test, and then you go through many process, and the product is actually internationally recognized. So what is your advice to them so that they be millionaire when they graduate, they will stay here, and they're not looking for the job, um, but they are their own job. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Bala. I think uh, one of the things that we can uh, we can what we can uh, advise and we can support to our student because of, for example, uh, right now uh, I think uh, one of uh, my subject at uh, FBKT, UMKG, basically uh, under subject uh, hygiene uh, food sustainability, what we actually do is uh, we trying to uh, encourage the student, okay, doing some sort like uh, <coughs> some sort like assignments or project that related to the product formulations and product consolidation. Okay, because of, for example, like uh, just now, when, when I try to, to discuss with all you guys regarding how you actually you can start up your, your business, I think like a really simple thing when you open your, your, your farm, brother. But I think, of course, many of, of, of students here, you have, you have your, your, what, your parents' land and so on, isn't it? Okay, for example, you just okay. Based, uh, I forgot to 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 what to to share with you just now. Okay, for example, I have here the proposal. Okay, like uh, for the proposal for the cost and return of investment, stingless uh, honey upstream and downstream project uh, for the. If you need to open your 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 what your 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 um, stingless honey farm. Okay, for example, for for example, for one acre for one acre of land. Okay, they can what they can you can allocate at least um, maximum is about 200 hive, okay, 200 colony for example. Meaning that for this 200 uh, colony, I think maybe okay, you can easily go to Mara for example. After you finish, you have your degree and so on. Where you need to start up your your what your business, you get you can go to Mara. Then you can loan from Mara just to buy the 200 hive. Okay, based on this uh, 200, uh, one acre, for example, if you need to do like, I think right now, the price per half, now uh, approximately about 550, or maybe you can get less than that, all right? And then for the total price, uh, I think it's about, uh, if 200 is about uh, 10,000 something, okay, you, you, you can allocate. But for this 10,000, 10, okay, the, um, I think for the, for the return, um, I think for the for the ROI, based on on the calculation that that, that I have to, to just when you when you consider the fixed capital investment, cost of operating labor, cost of utilities, cost of waste treatment, cost of raw material, everything, I think easily you can get back your your what your ten thousand uh, 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 what money just in three about two two up to two to two to three years, okay. I think, uh, for 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 example, when when I when I last time when I bought like 10, 10 what ten colony for example ten hive, all right. I think for one hive five hundred fifty or six hundred ringgit, all right. And then when uh, after six months for example when your when your hive is actually fully with the with the honey, all right. From one hive you can get up to uh, four to five kilogram of honey, okay. You try to imagine if we if we if we sell the honey uh, for the raw price is about 280 for example or 160 and that is the lowest one. If if you okay for example like 200 lah easy easy to calculate 200. Okay when you when you times by five kilo how much you can get from one one colony? It's about 1,000 isn't it? And then of course you can get not only not only you can get back your your what your your what your your for your for from your first investment you can get double of that. That's why I I I, I really um, uh, encourage my student. Okay, whatever that you need to start up. Of course, after you graduate, sometimes you have no way, you have no route. Okay, what actually I need to be? Okay, for example, okay, I need to be a technologist. I need to be an engineer. But if you go to the business straight away, open the land, bring the hive, do the invite the people because now we have the Instagram, we have the upper Facebook and everything. Ask them, ask them to come to your farm. Okay, for example, just not only for for what for the weekdays. Uh, then you can always uh, you can ask them to come only the weekend time. Okay, of course, like my experience during the weekend, I receive about. Uh, 11 to 12 group of family need to enter the, the, the farm, all right? And then for the 12 uh, group, you, you basically, you have no enough hand to, 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 to handle, okay? But if you are really serious on that, of course, you can make a lot of money on that, all right? I think that is another, another because of not just after you graduate, 
during your study, because we have really huge land in Jeli, for example, maybe you can write a proposal, ask from the deputy vice chancellor the, the space. You need basically you need to run your business in stingless honey, for example, or you need to you need to plant the banana because of you need to make it the the what the banana powder, for example. Just ask from from the DVC because now DVC not receiving any things from 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 all of you guys. But if you if you ask from DVC after this, of course, sometimes DVC will just surprise a bit. Wow! Now my students start to ask the land from me. Then I need maybe I need to spend for them basically because you have initiative on that. All right? I think uh, I answer your question, Prof. Okay. okay, thank you. I think uh, Prof already giving some overview lah, huh, about the business. It all depends on you all how to transform yourself. You are here not just to study, uh, understand entrepreneurship, but of course translated into when you go out, you start. Prof. Susanna, I want to ask a question from you. Um, you're talking about social entrepreneurship. You know that our majority of our students, uh, you know, the youth, uh, what is your advice to them to start up, you know? Um, you know, they inculcate the, 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 what they call the mindset of the entrepreneurship so that they can go help communities surrounding here. As you know, the Kelantan actually, why UMK was set up in Kelantan? Because to help the small industry surrounding here. But how are you going to advise them? They just come to class, they go back. You know, every holiday, one thing, they will go back home, you know. How to transfer to stay back here and they help the community? Thank you very much for the question. Now, I think <clears throat> at this juncture, I'm not really looking... Um, at the positive value of what we are currently doing like in terms of social entrepreneurship. We have the course, we have all the theories set, but we did not really go out there to understand what's going on. Yeah? Even the, most of the courses taught in class, right? The perspective of the Western is totally different. Even in Kelantan itself, it has its own uniqueness of poverty. You can't be compared those in Kuala Lumpur, for example. So this nature of uh, issues, yeah, I believe our university must play our own role. Yeah, I have a friend here from Imos, yeah, that uh, on your left here. Yeah. Um, I think I think he's uh, very much looking into all angles of opportunities. To what extent UMK can bring the values to the best effect to the nation of Kelantan. Yeah, uh, as a university, I think a lot of publicity. Along, I think we have done numbers of good projects, but we shot Sendiri, I think. Yeah, maybe publicity is less. When I was in back, right? I think their quick, good example is that every single process of day, they publicize it widely through their website, through the news. And you can see every year they won a lot of international awards yeah, for their outstanding. Right. <laughs> so, in this context, yeah, I think the top management has to revisit back our values, uh, bring our own uniqueness and make our presence more relevant. Yeah? For example, I must quote, lah, I must congratulate um, Datuk uh, um, TNC, PI Kita for the one good example, Professor at School Programme, right? So that is also another connection to the community of people outside. You know, despite the fact that we have more than 500 schools in Kelantan, right? Penetrating 100 is, to me, is a very good beginning for us to make ourselves relevant to the community. The value that we bring is that when we are associating uh, our move, yeah, we bring along our students some of the good values. Maybe they could identify opportunities, like for example, STEM education. STEM education has a lot to offer opportunities for our university to grow. We have FTKW, we had a lot. Uh, you know, we have AI, uh, IBIC um, Center, uh, right? That can expand out the nature industry 4.0, for example. So all these are in a need in school. Like today, the program that we have in my booth, maybe you can visit uh, IOT 07 and 06, yeah? We bring the value of um, Kelantan. We want to promote Kelantan as autism city. Yeah, and all these aspects, right? We have the expertise of our own. And actually, I'm uh, expecting uh, three grants from Korea, mounting uh, $70,000 each, 
yeah, to uh, make the impact for Kelantan uh, clear to the outsider. I mean, we want to tackle tourism yeah, through our mobile augmented realities. Uh, and then the autism city, and also the other one is uh, Green Point, because Kelantan, I think, is mengata-kata. Yeah? So the Green Point is actually another platform that I think the Technology of Korea, I think they are looking into our proposal now, in the hope that we pray so much we, we are getting into it. So this is under the Ministry of uh, uh, Communica apa? Communication and Multimedia. So all this is actually to bring about our values to the community and societies. And from there, right, from this angle, we should be able to tackle a lot of opportunities. Yeah? Stempreneur, for example, the university, UTM, University Malaya, now have been tackling a lot of issues on Stempreneur. What happened to our UMK? We must start some activities to, you know, before the university tackle. Yeah, we must bring our own uniqueness. We should be the first to have all this because we are the entrepreneur university. TVET, for example. TVET entrepreneurship. I know Mimos is taking a lot of big role in TVET committee. We want to also contribute to the nation. We want to make impactful program on uh, TVET entrepreneurship education. I've been going around and around, you know, I've been sitting, I've been called by the ten, uh, uh, technical and vocational division of Ministry of uh, Education. They've been talking a lot of, of on interest. They have school enterprise program throughout the whole nations of college vocational, right? But they don't have a good framework for specific entrepreneurship educations. So these are also a good opportunity for our universities. And connect that to the element of social cause. We want to do good and to do well at the same time. Social entrepreneurship is offering that. And I hope with those mindsets, students have thought, have been taught about social entrepreneurship cause. Yeah, you start to think this is the trend of the world of today. We must be able to do good at the same time and to do well. You are doing good for the business and you must think about the social issues that have been threatening. Not alone about social issues, but maybe because we are from social science. We talk about environment, green and so forth. So that is my two cents. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Zana and Prof. Ziad. I think uh, Pajabat TNC PNI, uh, since the beginning, uh, I can see that uh, when Dato come in, he always talk about translation of research. We are different from other university. Other university more focus on the research and the output is publication. But here we are, we are beyond after publication, then we go to commercialization. So we need to be champion actually uh, in UMK because uh, we should to use our research finding. That's why I think morning, I think you all carefully listen what Pro Raha talking about. Next year onward, the budget, I know the grant will based on the outcome for the society and community based. So if the research not translate to the community, uh, then they will be cut off the grant. So if we really, like UMK, as we know that they are very supportive, so we need to take opportunity to do research that community will benefit, especially community in uh, surrounding in Kelantan. We need to do a lot of research to transform into the hybrid on the, on the entrepreneurship. And we may become a champion or center for excellence so that many university come and uh, learn from us, you know, uh, how to be enter like Bethson, uh, Bethson College, we go there, they be center of excellence for us. So we have, can create another Bethson in uh, UMK as a per se. Lah. So I think uh, we are coming to the end. We would like to thank you to both. Uh, we can give a big applause to two speakers. Okay, so thank you very much to the Punjabat TNC PNI, especially Professor uh, Dato Jasni, Prof. Maizan, who are working very, very hard to make this successful. And I think we're very happy that all of you be patient and listen to the, these two speakers. But you can contact them. Go to their Facebook, email them. They're willing. Like Prof. Ziyad, 24 hours in the Facebook. He will answer anytime. Right? We're all in the there, so you don't worry. Young people, you know, you just communicate Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Eh? All right? The world changed. We got some souvenir for you guys.
end of the session of this afternoon session. And then once again, I would like to thank Datuk uh, to Datuk Ip, uh, Datuk Bat, uh, to the uh, uh, keynote speakers, uh, Prof Raja Suzana, Prof Ziad, uh, to the moderator, uh, Prof Bala, uh, and uh, to, uh, Prof uh, lecturers, students, and the other audience eh, for for making this session successful. Okay, um, and then, uh, okay, thank you very much to all of you. Uh, actually, we have the uh, tea pack provided uh, at the back of the, uh, this hall, so you are welcome to take that, okay, for the, uh, for the audience. Eh? Okay. okay, thank you.